We're going to be visiting the Luce Ball Desi Arnaz Museum. We are going to talk about the first lady of comedy today. Jay Leno and Jimmy Fallon both credit her with influencing them in their careers. Changed the way we think about comedy, changed the way we think about television, and did things that no one else had done before. So join me today, Walk With History, the Luce Ball Desi Arnaz Museum in Jamestown, New York. We are going to the Desi Lu Studio, Lucy Desi Museum, on the corner of 3rd Street and Main Street. Actually here from the corner of 3rd Street and Main Street, you can see the mural here, Hollywood. Here we come, way in the distance back there. So you actually can see it from the Desi Lu Studio, De Lucy Little Desi Museum corner. It's way back there. This is a walkthrough of their lives together outside of the I Love Lucy show. And here we are in the gift shop. So iconic picture of Lucille Ball with an iconic polka dot dress. Of course, she was a fashion icon and polka dots was her thing. Uh, her birthday was this month as well. So happy birthday, Miss Ball. Wrong, 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 wrong. Oh, it's Desi's birthday. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> happy birthday, Desi. <laughs> He's just as important. Actually, he is the, the mastermind behind the production, just like I have. We will be doing some pictures and a walkthrough of her life. This was in the bathroom at the museum when I washed my hands. So Lucille Ball, this is her, some of her clothing and personal items. Um, and this is Desi Arnaz. This is some of his personal items as well. He was big into horse racing. He actually owns a breeding farm in Del Mar. That's where he dies. So Lucy, she's born in Jamestown, August 6, 1911. Her family is from Jamestown. And this is a picture of her mother and her family. They were settled here in the area. And she actually is born in Jamestown, then goes to Sailoron with, at her grandparents' house. And then there's a tragedy that happens that actually brings them all back to Jamestown. And this is the Ferris wheel that was located right at, by her memorial park today, where she worked in the summers. Desi was born March 2nd, 1917, to a prominent family. His father was mayor of the city. But then the Cuban Revolution happened in 1933, and he goes to Miami. And that's where he goes to high school. I see Ventura there. All my babies were born in Ventura. So it just kind of stood out to me. Here's the movie that Scott's great-grandfather oh, was production prop master for. This has a connection to Bob Hope. This is an outfit from The Lucy Show in which Carol Burnett guest starred. Carol Burnett always looked up to Lucille Ball as a mentor. Um, Lucy had told her on her first Broadway show, if you ever need anything, kid, give me a call. This is the Chaplin outfit in which Lucy wears in the I Love Lucy show. She always looked up to Chaplin and Marion Davies um, as her mentors because they were great at physical comedy. Desi Arnaz, of course, had his own band leading um, background and he played at the Paramount, he did Cicero's, it was a nightclub on Sunset Strip, he was the headliner there, it was big for movie stars in the 1940s and 50s, he was uh, Bob Hope's band leader as well. They start Desilu Productions in the 1950s, they're the first ones to use film, they take pay cuts to use film but it was so innovative because of reruns and syndication, they produced Star Trek, um, Andy Griffith's show, um, Dick Van Dyke show. They did multiracial casting that showed STEM jobs and Star Trek, which just changed the genre. And in the long, long trailer from 1954, which was directed by Vincent Minnelli, uh, nobody, the studio didn't think anyone would want to see it because they can see him on I Love Lucy. But they outdid the biggest comedy of the time. And I love it because they show Mount Whitney and Yosemite, which are two of my favorite places. Lucille Ball was on the cover of TV Guide 39 times, more than any other person. And today we don't really use them, but 
at the time that makes her one of the most popular people in television. Desi and Lucy unfortunately divorced in 1960. Desi will pass away December of 86 and Lucy in April of 89. They are pioneering though. What they left behind, three camera filming, multiracial cast, iconic fashion, influencing today's comedians, including Leno, Fallon, and of course, Burnett. Did the Lucille Desi Museum in Jamestown, New York, the way it works is you go into one museum and it does their lives, their lives before Hollywood, their lives after Hollywood, their lives together, their lives apart. And then you come out of the museum, you walk down the street and you go into Desilu Productions. So that's the production company they started. Lucille Ball, so brave. If you're not gonna put me on air with my Cuban husband, I'm gonna make my own production studio to put myself on air with my Cuban husband. So you go down, they recreate the sets in this museum and you pay one fee to go into the Lucille Desi Museum and it also allows you to go into the Desi Lu Production Studio Museum. This is the Desi Lu Production Studio. I Love Lucy started off as a radio show called My Favorite Husband. And the radio show was so popular that they wanted to turn it into an actual Lucia television Ball show. And Lucy husband. said, if you're gonna have me do the television show, I wanna do it with my real life husband. And that's uh, Rick, uh, Desi Arnaz. And the studio came back with the racism, saying, well, he's Cuban, and we're not sure if we want a Cuban on air. So what Desi and Lucy did was they went vaudeville. Vaudeville was a form of entertainment in bars, theaters, different places where you could have this particular form of entertainment which was really a wide range of things. It started around the 1880s and it went through till the 1930s. In a vaudeville show you could see singers, jugglers, actors, magicians, even escape artists. Harry Houdini, the famous Harry Houdini, was there in vaudeville. And they proved how much people wanted to see them together, how funny they were. And after CBS saw the success of their vaudeville show, they said, let's make a deal. And that's how Lucy got what she wanted. <laughs> this is an iconic costume, the professor <laughs> costume. <laughs> Here's the vaudeville tour to prove to the studio that they were viable, they were funny, and people wanted to see them. This is a recreation of the I Love Lucy kitchen. And do you remember that scene where the bread comes out and the big bread loaf that she's overcooked? This is what the kitchen would have looked like. It's been recreated. So this is a recreation of their New York apartment. This aired for almost every season and episode of I Love Lucy until they moved to Hollywood. The address for this is actually fictional. It would actually have you in the middle of the, I think, East River in Manhattan. So it's not a real location. But this is a recreation of the set. The most popular living room in America. This is the Sally Sweet costume with the Sally Sweet Cuban Pete number that Lucy and Ricky performed. This is taken straight from their vaudeville tour. And of course, Desi Arnaz is credited with um, bringing the conga to America. Two very funny episodes, the Lucy saxophone episode where she plays the saxophone in Ricky's band. And the one where she wants a dress from Paris. And so Ricky um, buys her this burlap sack and pretends it's from Paris. <laughs> and she wears it and tries to glamorize it. His like little Ricky shorts. And Fred Mertz's costume. And of course we have to give credit to everyone on the show who made the show a success. William Crawley was a famous vaudeville actor. Hello, Gabriel.
everybody knows you can get around a woman with a little sweet talk. Yeah, well, that's all right for Lucy, but it's a little longer trip around Ethel. <laughs> they mean us. Oh, you great big Latin lover, you. Ah, uh, you sweet, handsome man, you. <laughs> you gorgeous, exciting woman, you. I pass. Vivian Vance. Broadway actress. Just amazing. So this is the Ricardo's Hollywood hotel room. This is when they visit Hollywood. Hollywood, here we come. My favorite episode when they're in Hollywood is when they go to Grauman's Chinese Theater and they steal John Wayne's handprints and footprints. George. <laughs> <gasps> Let's get on with a rub down. <laughs> Hurry it up. I got all day. <laughs> oh, I heard a butte in the steam room the other day. <laughs> it seems there was this traveling salesman. <laughs> he couldn't find a hotel room in this town. But he did find a farmer who had a beautiful daughter. Hey, take it easy, will you? Well, anyway, it was raining outside. Rain. Yes. Everybody on the set. They want you on the set. Okay. George, I'm wanted on the set. <laughs> And John Wayne actually comes here <laughs> to their room to get the cement, handprints and footprints back. A little known fact, Lucille Ball really wasn't a redhead. She was actually a brunette. She colored her hair blonde when she went to Hollywood. And I Love Lucy, she colored her hair red. So it was constant upkeep, I'm sure, to keep those tresses in their auburn stage. So this is some real magic of I Love Lucy. I Love Lucy was one of the first shows to be filmed on film, not just in front of a live studio audience, but on film. And that's what makes it great today to be in reruns and things along that nature. So Desilu production, Desi Arnaz was above his time pioneering film industry. So this is an editor, which you would use to edit film. But Desi Arnaz and Lucille Ball innovated was the three camera editor, where you could film with three cameras at one time, close ups, middle angle, wide angle, and then edit that together to give you a whole feeling of a shot. Today we do this on laptops very easily, but at the, back in the day, this was top of the line, new technology. And of course, Lucille Ball and Desi Arnaz always taking a chance, taking a risk, they went for this. So here at the Desilu Production Museum, they have a recreation of one of her famous episodes, the Vita Mega Megimite Opportunity. So she's trying to film a commercial uh, to break into Hollywood, as Lucille's always trying to do. And as she films it take after take, it has an alcohol content of 23%. So as she films it take after take, she gets a little bit more intoxicated, more intoxicated. And of course, the very first time she tries to film it, you see how great it tastes with her facial expressions. So they have the script here, and I'm going to do it for you so you can see what she's supposed to say and then how she's supposed to act. Hello, friends. I'm your Vita Meta Meggy, <laughs> Vita Meja Megiment girl. Hello, friends. I'm your Vita Meta Megiment girl. Are you tired, run down, listless? Do you poop out at parties? Are you tired, run down, listless? Do you poop out at parties? Are you unpopular? <laughs> the answer to all your problems is this little bottle Vita Meja Megimite. <laughs> to all your problems is in this little bottle. Yes, Vita Meja Megiment contains vitamins, meat, vegetables, and minerals. Yes, with Vita Meja Megiment, you can spoon your way to health. <laughs> all you do is take a great big tablespoonful after every meal. 
Mmm, tastes so good. <laughs> Just like candy. So why don't you join all the thousands of happy peppy people and get a great big bottle of Vita Megimint Medi tomorrow. That's Vita Meta Vegiment. <laughs> Cheris, Desi Arnaz, and Lucille Ball. One of the things you see happen a lot is people will confuse Desi Arnaz with Ricky Ricardo. They'll call him Ricky Ricardo. Desi Arnaz is not Ricky Ricardo. It's a person he played on TV. Lucille Ball is not Lucy Ricardo. She is Lucille Ball. So they were always being confused for the people they played on TV because it was groundbreaking. This is a recreation of the set. It goes to Ricky's bedroom, to their bedroom, to America's most popular living room, to arguably America's most popular kitchen, to the Tropicana, where Ricky Ricardo is band leader. This is his job. This is the set, or what the set would have looked like. Oh my gosh, look at these Emmys. Look at these Emmys. So in 1953, she wins Best Actress. 1953, they won Best Outstanding Comedy. We didn't expect to win this tonight. We're awful happy we did. It wouldn't be right to call our writers up here and give it to them, would it? <laughs> but I wish we could. 1954, Best Outstanding Comedy. 1955, Best Actress. 1967, Best Actress. 1968, Best Actress. Seems to be a trend. But here are the actual Emmys. And here is the I Love Lucy bedroom set. This is actually later, when their beds are together. In the beginning, their beds are apart. You could buy this bedroom set, good marketing, from the show. And of course, it has Ricky's toys in here, his little carriage and his rocking horse. So here's the awesome gift shop. Look at all these cool t-shirts. All American Girl. She was. The wink at the end. So many great t-shirts. I love Lucy. Lucy t-shirts. So Lucy is not just pioneering TV. She's pioneering fashion. And this is the first time people are actually seeing a woman on TV who is changing her hair, changing the, her clothing. And the polka dot dress really is iconic because she influences all these women to buy and wear polka dots. And of course, hair color and pearls and makeup. But the polka dot dress is really remembered iconically from the I Love Lucy show. I'm out in front of Cherry Street and Third Street, and way right behind me is the Hotel Jamestown. This is where Lucy Wall would stay when she came into town. So after her grandfather passes away, she comes back to town. She comes back in town to do some publicity for the town as well, and Hotel Jamestown is where she would stay. As I walk away from the Lucy Desi Museum, I actually bought an I Love Lucy t-shirt, because <laughs> I do love her. She was a pioneering woman and so many more things than just the TV show, which was iconic. But the bravery of Lucille Ball goes beyond that. She didn't even start I Love Lucille until she was 40. She thought Hollywood was done with her. She was the queen of B-movies. She didn't even know if what she was doing was making any difference, if she was going to make a living at it. She had met Desi. They had been married 10 years. And I Love Lucy, she had just had gave birth to her first child when I Love Lucy got the go-ahead to start making the show. Then two years later, she gets pregnant with little Desi. So she thought she was going to have to cancel her television show. And instead, they wrote it in. First woman to do that. Now how many people are pregnant in television shows, right? She's the first woman. She took a chance. Let's do this. Let's do pregnancy on air. Something in the 1950s that was never done. They didn't even say pregnant on TV. They had to say expecting. 
So Lucille Ball was a pioneer in so many ways than just the queen of comedy. 